Balash, you've won again. You beat Irene Sukanda. Uh, well, I was. I have to admit, uh, I was a bit uh, lucky in this game because after uh, move 15, uh, I started to feel that tiredness uh, is making its impact. So I strive for uh, simplifications. Even though I think uh, after already move 10, I was uh, I was better in this uh, strange anti martial uh, because she played uh, both uh, h3 and uh, h4, which I think shouldn't be so good. Uh, but then I couldn't uh, find a uh, good plan to, to increase my advantage if I have some, but I guess I have. So I, I strive for uh, simplifications. And then uh, in this uh, very symmetrical position, I think for uh, no reason uh, she gave up uh, bishop pair. And after that it was uh, one-sided and uh, she made a decisive mistake in, uh, I think, move 40. But even after that there were some uh, trick le tricks left, but okay, once I got the time uh, I could calculate it all. Do you think history could be repeating itself from rounds one and two? Because you're doing well, <laughs> you know, your colleagues not so well. What do you think? Well, uh, in Hungary we say that don't paint the devil on the wall. So yeah, I also thought about the same that we are plus. We were plus five before the round, and two plus three victories for the ladies would uh, make them champions. So I don't want his to be <laughs> history to be repeated. Are you a little bit worried? Yes, I have to admit. I, I don't lie. I cannot lie. So. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Okay, let's look at the game. Yes. Okay, Balash, we're looking at a fairly orthodox Ryla Pez position here. Take it away. Yes, it looks familiar because I had the same position two days ago against Gunai, and then I opted for d6 and to transpose to some mainline Spanishes uh, or Spanish, but today I decided to change uh, to some anti martial Can I have the pen, please? Yeah, uh, thanks. So here, uh, main move is uh, d3. And uh, here I either go for d6 and some uh, close positions or d5 uh, sacrificing a pawn and uh, in, uh, in typical uh, martial uh, spirit. And then I can either play knight d4 for uh, like positional compensation to get the bishop pair or uh, play queen d6, then swing a rook, a rook e8, c5 and try to cross the bishop to, uh, via d8 uh, to c7 and uh, play mm -hmm. for uh, attack. Yeah. But instead she played a4, a uh, nice mm -hmm. move. Which is, to me, it made a strange impression because white either plays h3 and then d3 or first a4 and then bishop b7 uh, d3. Uh, and here the e4 pawn is uh, undefended. So, okay, if I play d6, then d3, nothing happens. So I try to make use of this uh, omission. Mm -hmm. So bishop a2, knight uh, e4, d3 is natural. Uh, I checked something if knight e5 I'm not sure it works, so I can start with the bishop c5, but let's say knight f2, king f2 and uh, bishop c5. Oh, I think white cannot take, so he, he, uh, she has to play some queen h5, because here d4, queen f6, queen h4, it uh, reminds me, and I think it will remind the uh, um, diligent uh, viewers for the game BR against uh, Dubov in uh, similar variations. Okay. But of course she played d3, and uh, okay, after this, uh, I try to find different plans to play d5, c5, c4 to cut off the bishop, just play c5, d6, develop the pieces. And um, okay, I decided to, to play it uh, safe and easiest because I wasn't sure about uh, anything. So after move, uh, let's say uh, 20, uh, some exchanges uh, happened. Uh, more pro exchanges. Yeah, 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 so I think, uh, yes. yeah, d4 I wasn't really sure about <coughs> because after c4, I can get the knight uh, to this juicy uh, d5 square. So nice. I think still the position should be equal. And what I didn't understand is that why she let me take the bishop pair with uh, 26 f3. Because Jesus. instead she could play queen c1, queen e2 or something. Uh, and after knight e5 she could return with bishop b2, bishop d2. So after that uh, I, I uh, regained, uh, I gained the, the bishop pair, mm -hmm. she played some knight g4, and after, I think, offer draw at, after queen exchange, uh, move, uh, yeah, here, because, uh, of course, recapture is really easy, but I spent, like, two minutes, because I was, like, mm -hmm. probably the position is equal, but uh, with few minutes on the clock, uh, one can become stressed, as this is what happened, I think. Uh, I thought the optimal defensive setup for white would be just to play, like, Let's make some look. Knight f3, king f8 is normal. G3, king e7. And here I thought f4 is possible because whenever g5 happens, knight f5 is uh, quite unpleasant. Let's say bishop. Uh, is it my move? Okay, let's say okay b4. Uh, 
uh, I think she was afraid that I would push b3, but I think that's just uh, nothing. So, or or she could even bring the king first closer. Let's say previous move some some king e2. Okay, king e2 now brief b3. So okay, uh, but yeah, then the bishop is cut off. So let, what I want to show is okay. Let's go back to bishop uh, b4 now. Bishop. Yeah, here. Before b. Yeah, before. Okay, what I want to show is that like some. Uh, optimal defensive setup would be that the king just arrives on time to d2, bishop mm -hmm. to f3, and I think should be should be a draw. And even uh, at move, uh, yeah, some uh, 37, I think. Yeah, here, okay, bishop a2, I didn't really understand. I could play king b6, uh, king a5, but I didn't want to lose time because b4 is easier to make already because uh, if she takes what she did in the game then I come with king b5. I'm not sure about actually, I think I calculated one line that let's say she gets here in time but bishop c8 is like key move forcing g5 I guess I take and I wasn't sure about this end game but Maybe wins for me because the bishop is uh, scut off so, from, uh, from, yeah. from the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was move 40 when it was critical position, king a4. Yeah, uh, so sorry, uh, yeah, 39, bishop b1. 39, bishop b1. Yes, yes sorry. this one. So originally I wanted to take back, a take on, on b4, take back the pawn, but then I realized that, okay, it's move 40, I can always take back, so let's play king a4. And uh, here it's uh, already not easy. So like she previous uh, moves, she played bishop e2, bishop b1. So, so like making bishop e2 would be quite silly, but probably needed or knight a1, but okay, none of them works. And I think she found, uh, okay, if king before bishop c2 may be reaching some kind of uh, setup, but even after that, uh, I can try to switch to, to the d6 pawn. And okay, I think now uh, knights, White misses only one tempo, and now I win. So I wasn't sure about uh, king mm -hmm. b4, but I didn't want yeah. to give time, so I played king b3. King b3, yeah, uh, that's right. It's always so, difficult down there for some reason. No, 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 king b3, that's fine. And here, uh, what she played, b5. b5. Yeah, okay, other than that, uh, if I take on b2 and uh, return to c3, b4 would be hanging, so it's logical to push the pawn forward as possible. And I was quite lucky here, because uh, I, I missed, like, I, I think I played king takes b2 a tempo, and bishop e4 is a wow. very clever or resourceful uh, defending plan, because the plan, wow. of course, pawn is hanging, and if I take, uh, I wasn't sure about this, but... Wow. It, wait, yeah, yeah, king, I thought king d2 is possible, and now white has to go back to c4, because if she takes, I think I promote, and there is no check, so she goes back, king... Maybe maybe 96 is possible, but let's say we get this endgame, I can even collect the pawn. Probably should be winning, but wasn't 100% uh, sure. So I had to check other options. Bishop a4, instead of king c3, uh, one move. Sorry, uh, oh, sorry uh, one more move. Bishop e4 instead. Uh, some, sorry, bishop e4. Uh, yeah, the move <laughs> she played. All oh, right, bishop And here, yeah. probably c3 wins as well, but I wasn't sure for two reasons. One is that she gets this defensive setup with knight c2 and bringing the king closer, should be winning. But then I realized that she can play bishop c2 instead. And the thing is that she brings the king via e2 to d3 and then knight d1 check suddenly wins my pawn. So, oh, so no. I had to be alert. And I think king c3 I found, uh, okay, I'm proud of that. If wins, it, it should be, uh, I can be proud of that. So the point is that if she takes, uh, 95, king d4, both pieces hanging, mm -hmm. no discovery is easy winning. Mm -hmm. But the big point was that uh, if she takes with the bishop instead, mm -hmm. uh, I take. And this is very similar but still very different uh, from the previous endgame with uh, knight against bishop. Because her knight doesn't have a good square. Like, okay, knight f6 goes too far away and if she comes here, king d3 I think I play first and then I threaten to play bishop c5 if b5, b6 I'm still in time bishop c5 take and return mm -hmm. to a7 sure. so should be winning and she tried uh, a resourceful uh, defense once again like co seemingly is losing but actually it's not so easy because I cannot really move my bishop away from this diagonal mm -hmm. because it has to defend the pawn mm -hmm. I played okay, king c5, king d2 that's normal and here okay I cannot push d4, I cannot move my bishop what do I do? And uh, actually the winning plan is like very, very narrow, I think, like quite narrow, but uh, I think I found it low. So bishop e7, it's, it's necessary that I have the bishop on this diagonal and not on the other one. 
I will I will show in a second okay. why. Right. King c2, bishop f6. That's and right. the thing is that, yeah, bishop f6, thank you. Um, my plan is that I want to get to the knight via bishop d4. And if the knight moves, I can take the pawn. So, uh, and then of course it's winning. Yes. So, okay. I and I need to use the fc square because other than that, let's say I, uh, and the point is that if she plays b6, okay, burning all bridges. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's important that I have bishop d8. If I don't have bishop d8, maybe she makes a draw. Because uh, let's no. say if I have the bishop on g7 instead, I can only play bishop d4. Mm -hmm. And bishop d4, now she starts with knight d5, takes on b7. And I have to take, okay, maybe bishop f2 wins, but uh, I don't want to try that. And my idea was that she, when she plays b6, uh, yes, in this analysis variation, uh, this move, I can just go back here. And the yeah. point is that I'm close with the bishop because if she takes, I take on b7, bishop c7, and I don't have this resource with the bishop on. Yeah. Whatever, G7. So you're, you're controlling those two squares. Yeah, yeah. So whatever she does, you've got a bishop move. Yes, yes. And she okay. tried some G5 once, another sacrifice to bring the knight closer. <coughs> but okay, I was two pawns up. And uh, after that, uh, let's say, uh, move uh, 52, I think. Move to two. Like here, let's say, okay, I play G5, of course, to save the knight. Uh, yeah, after that, okay, I played some king c5, but I could just untangle basically with bishop c6, because even, okay, let's say bishop g2, just to show, uh, okay, bishop c6, okay, next move king c5, and there is no 97. If she takes, even this endgame wins, with because of the uh, existence of the g-pawns. Okay, if I have h-pawn, then it's a draw, because the corner square is not good, but with g-pawn, who cares? And the thing is that, uh, let's say, why just cannot uh, set up a fortress like here? Uh, I will start pushing F, and if uh, she sacrifices, I have still got one pawn, and yeah. it's yeah. enough to win. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>